Good afternoon everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am Judy and I call myself The Running So-and-So. And before I start with today's vlog, I really just want to say thank you so much for the most wonderful comments on my last vlog, my little spontaneous trip to Walton's with Rachel and my sewing. And I've put down, I said rather than plans, I've put down hopes because I know that life gets in the way at times and believe me when I started to do my finishing which is actually all around me on my sewing machine there's a bit there and there's a bit here and I'm getting through it I went and got the cold didn't I so my face is all red my nose feels so sore I think I look like Rudolph the red nosed reindeer but all being well I am on the other side I'm just very bunged up but every time I go outside it sort of clears my nose naturally and it's the most amazing feeling now I have just edited this video because I'm going to take a little bit out but I am doing the put it down the bottom here five questions one take and so if I'm scratching my nose or rubbing it it's because I am just so sore. I am really, really sorry. I'll apologise now. I've already taken a couple. Hold on. I have seen this tag going around and I've never done one of these where as a vlogger I answer questions. So let's just see what happens. I've not listened to anybody else's. I saw, who did I see doing it? Jess from So What If I Sew. I saw you starting to do it. Then I saw Sam at Frugalissima and there's a whole load of other people. And I'm going to suggest that a couple of my sewing friends do it. I'm going to suggest that Rachel does it again. I'm going to suggest that Sean at Kittenish Behaviour does it again. And I did think of somebody else. Oh yes, yeah, Susie at Threadquarters, maybe you'd like to do it again. The only reason being, when I looked at the questions, they might have changed now since you last did it. Because apparently this little hashtag has been going around for quite a while. Uh, I cannot remember who started it. But I thought I'd give it a go. Oh, Tamlin, I'm going to tag you in to do it again as well because your sewing journey has taken a right lovely path. So let's just review where we are. So if you've done it, maybe I'll do it again in three years' time. Should have done it 50 years ago, but there you go. Right then, question number one is, what has your sewing journey looked like? Hmm, my sewing journey. Now, my sewing journey, I can really remember starting in my grandparents' house in the village of Tongwinless, just outside Cardiff. And my mum had got this piece of fabric and she'd drawn round um, a, a glass on it. There were six circles and I had to do six embroidery stitches because I wanted to sew. And she said I had to do a sampler first. So I did said sampler. It took a while. I can remember fly stitch being the bane of my life and I think I was about four when that happened. Then I can remember doing a, a, an applique at school. And my school was in Ruddington, near Nottingham. Uh, it was called James Peacock Infant School. So any of you viewers out there, anybody that might be watching my channel that went to Nottingham or lived in Ruddington and went to James Peacock Infant School, just perhaps give me a little thing because I'm going to mention the next school in Ruddington in a minute as well. So I can remember at, at the infant school doing um, a lovely, uh, like an applique uh, picture and it was on binker using felt and it was of a Welsh lady and I think I gave it to my grandma. Hold on a minute, I've got a coffee because I am so in need of fluids. And just to make matters worse, I'm doing Go Sober for October. To anybody in America, if you don't know what that is, it, it's for fundraising for Macmillan Cancer Relief to pay for Macmillan nurses to help people with cancer. So I can't have any alcohol. I've been sober since the 25th of September and I'm going all the way through to the 28th of October because I'm stopping a few days early. So then I made a needle case for my mother, which was, it was gorgeous. It was a cat and it was felt and it folded over. And I can remember having to sew the inside to this needle, uh, this needle case for mum and we all took them home and we gave them to our mums for Christmas. Very 1966, isn't it? So there we go, got to about five. Carried on doing little bits of dollies making of clothes. I'm, you know, my mum made dolls clothes and I made dolls clothes and scrap bags were around. There was always fabric to play with. 
needles to play with and whether I was making a proper garment or just getting two pieces of fabric to sew together to make a dress for a doll. That's how it evolved for me. And this went on for a number of years. And I can remember in the equivalent of year six, we'd been to Canada and we'd come back from Canada and the teacher in year five was doing a sewing class and I wanted to join it. She was the teacher that was as hard as nails and her name was Miss Steele. There you go, brilliant name for a teacher. Anyway, Miss Steele wanted us to make blouses and everybody else was fighting set in sleeves. And my mum got me a pattern with semi set in sleeves and a gathered neck and mine was the only top that worked. And Miss Steele did say that my mum had got the right thing. And from there we went to secondary school. So my junior school, where I did that with Miss Steele, was St Peter's Junior School in Ruddington. It's in, if you are from that area, I'll just waffle on for a minute. It's the old secondary modern village, uh, building off Ashworth Avenue. It's a long time since I've been there, but there you go. And from there I went to Rushcliffe Comprehensive School in West Bridgeford, just outside Nottingham. Oh, ironically, I've got some more trivia for you. The head from Rushcliffe is now the head of our secondary school up the road. And I can't stop because Maggie's twittering in the background. Anyhow, I had a great um, sewing teacher at Rushcliffe called Miss Kemp. Was it Miss Kemp? Something like that. Anyhow, and she, we did basic wear that we'd need around the oh, house. I mean, talk about typecasting, it was crazy. The boys did metal work and we girls did needlework, except Catherine Howard's mum argued. And she got to do, she got to do metal work because she didn't want to do needlework. Anyhow, there you go, I digress. So I made an apron that had to have bound, sleeve, uh, bound edges and French, that was when I did my very first French seam. And I made an oven glove. I made the oven glove because I finished my apron before everybody else. And we went through school like this. We did a sewing in every single year up to year 11, uh, 10. And my dad, as I mentioned on my very first vlog, did not agree with girls doing, or me as particular, doing subjects like sewing because they weren't academic enough. So there was a bit of a gray area for one year when I, equivalent of year 10. And then I started patchworking by hand, carried on sewing at home, making little bits of this, that and the other. And I did this little patchwork, it was English paper piecing. And then we moved up to Yorkshire and I'd had a bit of a disaster with my, GC, with my GCSE equivalents. And then I, um, the teacher there said to my dad, what does your daughter like doing? And he went very quiet and so she asked me and I said I love sewing. So she had me doing every single sewing course in the school that I could perhaps do. So I now have my O level in, in domestic science sewing. Um, which, how I passed it I really don't know because I had the most appalling cold on the day of the exam. Anyway, I passed it. We had to make half a garment perfectly. And I did GCSE in a year and followed by a level in a year embroidery which was not easy no way was that an easy thing to do we had to do something called experimental embroidery um, which I got both of them I mean it was it was just great fun and from there I went into work to wonderful world of work and I made clothes for work I made skirts I can remember making skirts with people I worked with um, I made Oh, I made dresses for interviews and it just went on dresses to go out in, dresses to go on holiday in. I made a Belleville Sassoon, it was called the Ruffled Princess. I'm going to try and put a picture in just here of the Ruffled Princess. Oh, I love that dress. Absolutely adored it. Somewhere there is a picture of me wearing it. And I'm just trying to think where it is then. Uh, I know exactly where that picture is. I might put that one in. Boy, do I look young. Anyway, this, this pattern carried on. I would had got my own sewing machine by this point. My dad bought me a sewing machine for my 18th birthday. My dad, my parents bought me my little Elna Lotus that I've shown you before for my 18th birthday. And basically, that's how it evolved. Um, when I had Tristan, I then started City and Guilds and I was doing that in Hull um, every day um, for a week. For quite some time I was travelling from York to Hull every week to do this particular course, but I absolutely adored it. So there you go. Who taught me to sew? Mum. 
grandma, Miss Steele, my infant teachers, my school teachers, but I was always the one, and I'm not, I hate saying things like this, I was always the one that finished first, did everything first, got it right first, and I'm gonna stop at that point. Um, there's never been a break in my sewing, never. I've always sewn through everything. Even the day that my husband died, a sewing book had arrived the previous day. And to escape from what was going on, I looked at that. Um, I've never done anything with it because it was, I was on the point of taking my sewing in a different direction at that point when David died. I wanted to make Tudor costumes, but it was to do with what I was doing at work in school. And we went to a Tudor building every year. So number two. I think, I've, just before I do number two, I think I've answered that correctly. Oh, it says, um, any uh, taught me, so obviously the ladies that did the City and Guilds did an awful lot with me. There was a, a, a lady who'd done City and Guilds previously in our village who helped me with my wedding dress called Sue Wilson. And there was Lynn's mum, Pat, who was a tailoress from West Yorkshire. And the most hilarious thing now is I'm teaching Lynn to sew. Just because she, she said, well, my mum taught me, taught you. So, yeah, and Pat, you know, I, I look at the way I do things and think, would Pat do that? Would Pat do this? And then, obviously, I did the City and Guilds. And I have been on a course um, at Lauren Guthrie's, as people know. So, excuse me, question number two. Describe my sewing space. Where is it? Is it shared? Is it private? Is it messy? Is it clean? Right, my sewing space, I like it to be tidy. I'm in my sewing space, and as you can see, it's at the bottom end of my kitchen. I've done this before. There was, there was a little room at the bottom end of my kitchen when I bought the house. And I took the wall out that was here and it's opened the whole room up. And it got used for a table. It, we tried it as tables. We tried it as sitting. And one day I just woke up when I'd, had, when I'd done my leg last year and said, this should be my sewing space. End of. It's my sewing space. It's got two huge tables in it. Um, from Ikea, it's got loads of Calax units in that can take the sewing machines um, and all my storage and I've got pegboards on the wall I've got patterns up here, oh yeah look see, I'm going to, this one here where the blue is that is my Maison Fort, that's my French pattern shelf my French pattern shelf I've got a French pattern here as well so I do like to keep it tidy because I've got the dogs here I like to keep everything away so I do wind up my foot pedal for my sewing machine. Look, here you go, wound up. I keep everything, I've got a, a mast on my sewing machine. Look here, that would go, to, it's going to be out of focus, but I've got a mast on that and that always goes away. Put everything away so it's protected from the dog so it doesn't get dust on it. So if I don't get to the sewing machine in the day, nothing's going to happen to that. Number three is an interesting one. What is it like to be a sewing YouTuber? Well. First of all, I'm going to answer that by telling you that as my subscribers went up, and thank you so much if you've subscribed, if you haven't and you're enjoying this, give me a subscribe. My children think it's hilarious that their mother has got a YouTube channel and they call me an influencer. Ha ha ha. An influencer. Me, not a chance. But anyhow, it's been great fun. And it says here, is it how you thought it would be? and reactions from others, and does it meet my expectations? I don't think I had any expectations when I started this. I think I viewed it a little bit like it will be fun. I think that's what I thought, and I thought, there's lots of people out there sharing what they've learned, and I thought, I'm sure I could add to this and give my own opinions. So that's why, I, one of the reasons I started. And also, I live on my own as most of you know, I hope think that you all should know by now, is that I'm widowed. So I live on my own. My children have got their own families. Well, families, partners. I'm not a grandma yet, but I'm hoping very soon. It's going to be my turn to be a grandma. Um, and it, it's something to do, something to occupy myself, and it's something to make contact with. So although it's not an actual physical interaction with somebody, it is a social interaction and you are communicating with people and that is really important but also using the IT doesn't half spark the brain and, and that is one of the most important things as you get older is keeping your brain active so I'm you know to be sat here with I've managed to get all my 
all my text for these questions is up here on my laptop um, and that's all computerized and the laptop talks to the, the sewing machine sewing machine talks to the laptop the whole things work and i've managed to do that and there's nobody there to help me because my son takes a look at it and goes oh, i don't know what a mac does so i'm like well i'm really sorry tristan that's what i've got so then hannah comes and has a go and sees if she can she can do it um it's hard work doing youtube but it's fun and it, it's, it is enjoyable. And when you get the messages and the comments that are so encouraging, I love that top. You know, I, I did that, that top by um, Atelier Brunette. Well, actually, I'm going to waffle about this one. That taught me a lesson about YouTube because that top is called Le Sweat. Hold on a minute. I'm going to cough and I can't turn you off. <coughs> um, it's called Le Sweat. And I entitled it Le Sweat. And I'm going to go back in and take that down. Because one of the things that it does do with your titles, it sends it out to various places. And you get people who've got inappropriate sites making comments. <laughs> and I've had quite a few of those because of the word sweat. So it has been very, very comical. And I have learned quite a bit. So it, though it doesn't ask for funny instances, it's been absolutely hilarious watching that one go through. Says this number four is describe your most memorable project. Well, it has to be my wedding dress, and I'll try and put a picture in me and my wedding dress with David. It has to be because I bought two bolts of French Chantilly lace from a shop called Allen's of Duke Street in London, and aligned it totally with the wrong. Well, people would say it would have been I should have aligned it with silk, and I said no, I actually want cotton. I want a nice, cool cotton underneath there. Um, and that has been one of my biggest successes. The other big success would be my swing coat. And I've got a picture of that there. And it was a claws pattern. I'm looking to see if it's up there. It is. I'm going to grab it. Hold on. That will do. Can't turn you off. It's a one take video. Ta da! I did that in silver. And this was done um, when the children were younger. I said to David, oh, look at this pattern. I bought a copy of both patterns magazines when, oh, I don't know where, we'd been going somewhere and I'd seen it at a petrol station. So I bought this and David said, oh, just, just, just get it. Just get the stuff you want for it. And I bought the fabric from the cloth house on Berwick Street because I'd been shown where that is by people I worked with because I was working at the girls' boarding school next to me as the textiles technician at the time. Um, total fail. I have had a total fail. I've had two, and they're quite recent. Um, the Maya Sotis dress by Girondo. Just didn't like it didn't do anything for me and the Sirocco by Deer and Doe couldn't get it I just couldn't get my head around it just gave up I just put them to one side didn't lose any sleep over it didn't really give it any more thought until I read this question now um we do get them and that brings me to my final thing which the final thing is a quote it says here number five what is one quote saying, piece of advice you've got, you've got that resonates with your sewing? Now, Mrs. Barnaby, that was Miss, the high school where I did my um, domestic science, my O-level domestic science in Beverly. Tack, 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 tack with Mrs. Barnaby, which is why I tell you to tack or base, whatever you want to call it. But I have just been translating this afternoon the instructions for the Astrid jumpsuit by Coralie Biasson patterns. It's on my it's on my last vlog. And uh, I've blown them up because they're so small and it's a bit easier to get them to translate when they're a bit bigger. And there's one little paragraph I'd love to read to you. And what I'm going to do is that as I read it, I'm actually going to put it as a little bit of a thing across the bottom and I will type it out and put it in the description box and I might even bung it on um, Instagram this afternoon 
because it's so true. So I want to attribute it to CoralieBiasson.com and I'm going to uh, credit her in my uh, description box and tell you which pattern it is. So I've got it out of the instructions for the Astrid jumpsuit. I will check. I've got a couple I think I've got another couple of her patterns and I'm pretty certain that they will have the same comment in. And it says this. Sewing is a game of patience and precision. So do not forget your notches for assembly and above all, do not forget that quotes. Doing and undoing is always work. And that's where it finishes. It's always work. It does make you think, doesn't it? It is always work, but it might always be work. But you've got to think of what you're learning and what you're achieving. And on that note, I'm going to say thank you for watching. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. I hope you like it. I'm a bit apprehensive. And if you've not subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button and keep on my journey. I will be putting out tomorrow or Monday my um, finishing video. Uh, and I've got things here, but unfortunately, you all know what it's like when you get one of those colds. It, it wipes you out, end of. And there's no point fighting about it. As the saying goes, no, no point crying over spilt milk, it's happened, you've just got to get on with it. So goodbye for now and I'll see you all soon. I'm going to go and feed the dogs now because they are absolutely creating in the background here. Bye bye.